<coughs> Thank you, Dr. Greva, uh, and for giving me this opportunity. So I'll be talking on buying posterior segment equipment, which, uh, why, and when. Uh, so we need a lot of equipment for VR, VR setup, and it's uh, not possible for all of us to buy all the equipment. Uh, we need indirect ophthalmoscope, various lenses, of course, slit lamp, fundus camera, OCT, V-scan, electrophysiology, OCT angiography in the later stages, laser, operating microscope, and VR surgery set up, various accessories for the VR surgery, recording facility, and appropriate anesthesia and nursing care. So if you do an unplanned purchase, it will be a very chaotic way of your handling your practice. And as you know that if you do a planned uh, uh, planning of your whole setup, you are likely to be successful. There are less chances for you to fail. But if it is unplanned, you are likely to fail more. But rarely you can also succeed with an unplanned way of uh, setting up your practice. So for any VR surgery setup, you have to plan out what is stage one stage two and stage three of your practice as you grow up in your practice. Initially, you would definitely need a slit lamp, you need an indirect ophthalmoscope, you need various diagnostic lenses, and as of today, you would definitely need an OCT and maybe a fundus camera. Uh, in the stage two, you would need laser vitrectomy setup with all the accessory facilities, the wide angle viewing system, anesthesia facilities, and in the later stages, once your practice is fully set up, maybe a micropulse laser recording system, OCT angio, ICG angio in electrophysiology. So as I said, once you have decided to buy, you must uh, evaluate the market, make your choices as this lady is doing to pick up the right shoe. Uh, um, it's important that you decide to buy the, the, uh, the, the right machine and you must be able to negotiate well when you buy. As Dr. Grewal said, you must deal with all the negotiations right at the time before you buy the equipment, not after it when the equipment is arrived and then you will probably not get a deal. Uh, it's also been mentioned which brand to buy. You should decide about the specs of the available brand, your present and future needs, the reputation of the brand, what is the peer review, what is the literature review, what is the reputation of the supplier and can you afford a new machine because that's the latest or at this stage of time you can buy an old machine from a friend who is probably better off in practice at the moment and wants to sell off and wants to buy a better machine. So you decide upon the cost and look at the return of investment. So let's look at a few things which you need. You probably need uh, for slit lamp biomicroscopy, you need contact lenses and some of the non-contact lenses. And these are the various non-contact lenses that are available, uh, 60D, 70D, 90D, and there are various others like Super 66, Super Field, and this wide variety of lenses sometimes very confusing. And then you have a contact lens which is standard lens for central retina and a wide field lens. So these are the various lenses that are available. They have the pros and cons, but a 90D is a good buy in the initial stage of practice. You can certainly go in for 70D because it's better and easier to hold, but a 90D is a good buy, good lens to buy. These are also other non-contact lenses, and you could probably go in for what is called as a digital wide field or the digital HIMAG or the combination of these and they are very useful uh, to as a supplement to your 90D and they get a much wider view of seeing the fundus because sometimes when your practice becomes uh, much more very busy, you may not be able to do an indirect ophthalmoscopy which is not actually correct. You can at least do a good examination with a 90D or a digital wide field lens. The contact biomicroscopy lenses are particularly useful if you do not have an OCT, you can virtually see all the findings of an OCT with a contact biomicroscopic lens till you get an OCT. And they are also useful when you have to do laser photocoagulation. And these are the various characteristics of a contact biomicroscopy lens. You basically need two of them, one which is a standard central lens and one is which is a wide field lens. Now looking at an indirect ophthalmoscope, which is very important, there are certain characteristics which you should know of. You should have a headband which is padded inside. It should be adjustable 
with the maximum diameter. And I find it a lot of problem because some, uh, maybe the head is a little bigger. I'm not able to tighten the, uh, the indirect. So they invariably slip after a few months. So it's important that you look at these null knobs which are here and on the side and behind that they stay at a place once you put it on your head and scene. So you have to take a demo from the company and decide that all these characteristics are looked at. Light source, most of them are now turning on to be LED because they have a long life. Then a wired or a wireless, because a wireless system works better. You are not hampered with wires. It makes your practice much more useful. And the, ch the charge on a wireless system actually lasts. The interpupillary the distance is important. And you should know what are the various spot sizes that are available so you can do a small pupil examination, what are the filters available. Uh, and whether you can adjust the beam height up and down. So once you've looked at all these factors, then you decide that which indirect ophthalmoscope to buy. So it should be lightweight. I would prefer an LED white light. I would prefer a wireless one. I would prefer the indirect which is padded inside. I would prefer one which has got a small pupil option. And with a with an adjustable PD up to 74 or 75 millimeters, I, sh I should have one where I can adjust the height of the beam up and down and I can uh, go into the small pupil mode. It's not moving. Okay. Then the next important thing to come is the lenses which you have. You can have a 14 or 15 adapter lens, a 20 adapter lens, and a 28 or 25 adapter lens. This is not moving. On. So you can have, the, so this lens is a standard lens which you have. And a 20D lens with an ACS written on side is a lens which you can use for autoclaving. So this is a standard lens which is very useful. And uh, you, if you are going to be doing surgery, then a 20 adapter uh, ACS lens is useful. As Dr. Grewal said, the system, the lens should be delivered to your own uh, uh, the, 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 all the equipment should be delivered to your place. And I remember when I was, when I started my post-graduation, I ordered a Nikon lens, the Nikon 20D lens. I was a junior resident and ordered directly without knowing anything from the Nikon company. It came all the way from Japan and was delivered in my hostel room. And I still have that lens, it's still useful. It cost me only 1,000 rupees. So then the fundus camera, uh, there are multiple characteristics which you should know, uh, which a fundus camera should have. What is the field angle, which is, has an option of 30 degrees, 50 degrees. And then I like a fundus camera which can swivel up and down, which can swivel left and right. And I personally prefer a fundus camera where I can look through the eyepiece and, and look at the fundus. But nowadays, most of the fundus cameras don't have the visibility. You directly give it, uh, you, they can see it without going through the, uh, looking at the eyepiece. And then there are other modes like, uh, what is the midriatic, non-midriatic, uh, whether it's angiography, stereo, and uh, fundus autofluorescence. So these are the various fundus cameras that are available. We will not go into the details. Uh, of the fundus cameras and you should go into all the characteristics and finally decide based upon what is the budget, what is the best you get offered from all these fundus cameras and what you can afford at this point of time. I would suggest that fundus camera is there, uh, there to stay in your clinic for a long, long time and it's best to buy a new machine. There are uh, other uh, cameras which are now available like a Zeiss Claris, which basically gives you a wide field and this comes later in practice. The OCT machines, there are multiple OCTs available. Some of them actually come with uh, a fundus camera and uh, I'll not go into the details of uh, how, what are the analysis options available, but they are important. Uh, So they have various options available where and what software they use. So you should go, go into details of the comparison which is all available on the net. Look at the, uh, look at the options which you need in your practice. Uh, talk to the peers, look at the pricing and then decide which uh, OCT machine you want. And you should also see whether this is DICOM compatible or not. So best for your needs, best you can afford, good peer review has most latest characteristics that you're looking for, has an easy maintenance, and the supply is good, and you have a good service support available. That is the OCT which you'd like for. 
B scans, there are multiple options now available. Many of them are Chinese brand. Uh, they, they have poor service, so go for a B scan which has got a good service support. It's not a flyby company which comes one day and it disappears the next day. They are cheap, uh, the Chinese brands, but they may not la be there next year in, uh, in, in, in years. If you buy one today, and you, they may not be there for the next year. So make sure that you buy from a good, uh, good brand. Uh, it should have a digital storage. Uh, you should be able to print a report well because you have to give the reports to the patient. And all your machines, whichever you buy, should have a DICOM compatibility. They should, they should allow you to give you the software right in the beginning rather than make it difficult for you later on that no, we will not integrate this machine into your EMR because you have to buy our uh, software to make it DICOM compatible. There are multiple lasers which are available. Your, um, uh, it depends upon your personal experience where you were trained, what is the peer info, what is the company support available, whether you want a slit lamp delivery, a laser and direct ophthalmoscope, endo laser, whether you want a micropulse option, green or yellow, and whether you want to move this laser, whether you want a single or a dual source, which is important. And, uh, and I have recently bought a laser which has got a foot switch which doesn't have wires, and I'm really thankful that I made that decision because I can control everything without a support available. I can increase the power, decrease the power myself. I don't have to depend upon. Uh, it did cost me a little bit, but it was a good addition. So there are various lasers available, Iridex, Zeiss, Nidex, and we have a good laser which is made in India, which is made by Apaswami, which is also a, a good brand. And I think we must promote our uh, Indian brands if they, if they are of good quality. I will not dwell too much on the me machine, but you have the Alcon, which has got a major market share. And you have the Dock, which is, uh, uh, we, we have used the Dock Harmony for many, many years, and we are very satisfied with it. It didn't, for last almost 12 years, it did not break down even once, which is a record. And now we have upgraded to higher machines, so all these machines are available. And we have some Indian companies like Reticure and Apasami, which have, which have got very good service support available, and which are compatible with, the, with, with which are as good as many of the newer, uh, uh, multinational uh, brands which are available. So it's also important to look at the vitrectomy accessories like the illumination system, viewing system, types of cutters, with, uh, with, uh, whether it is disposable or multi-use, the trocar cannula system, the endo laser probe, and you must in a VR practice you have to improvise. And I use my own uh, ant system. It has reduced my cost significantly. And I was made to do this uh, analysis by the BMJ group. And I, and I compared if the entire world was using Alcon versus the entire world using this instrument, yearly they will be saving 9.7 billion rupees. So that is the importance of innovation if it can be done. So take home messages, budgeted equipment, decide what stage you want to buy which equipment, decide the brand and the supplier, do a good homework, do not compromise on quality, plan three to five years of AMC, AMC should be bought well in advance, train your staff for equipment maintenance, improvise your system and where possible buy a make in India equipment. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh,